All right, guys, we got a lot of different things going on here today, and I'm not sure what order uh, I'm even going to be getting videos out. But obviously, still trying to get the Trans Am working properly. Um, trying to get that green S13 running, which we did. Uh, it's running and driving. We just got some other issues that we're having to work, work through. I got to get the STI ready for uh, the road, getting ready to head west for Thanksgiving, and it's got some issues going on in the front end. Uh, a little flashback to a, a quick look I did on the lift to get underneath it and check things out and see what's going on. Okay, so here's what we're dealing with here. Pulled the wheels off to see if there's any free play in the struts, any of the uh, components here, any of the fittings down here, back in the back, up front. Uh, everything seems to be good up here, so... Um, and all the connection points, I don't see anything there. Okay, so when I go full lock here, it, I mean, it goes smoothly on either side, both ways, but when I rock it back and forth, you can hear it, I can feel it. And I'm guessing maybe that's something to do with that. That power steering rack, you no, know, maybe it's because it doesn't have the fluid in there pressurizing it right now, and so it's that plunger just kind of moving back and forth. I'm not really sure here. I'll raise it up higher and get a better look and see what else might be going on underneath. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, uh, everything looks solid in here. Nothing seems to be loose, any of the connection points. Here, here, here. All right, I think it's gonna be a matter of checking diff fluid front and rear. When we get her home, I just wanted to have the opportunity to get it on a lift and see if there's anything obvious going on under here. Um, today, the plan of attack is get the, uh, that green S13 out of here, get the STI in, and uh, I'm going to start with the secondary air valve uh, assembly. So back off with the intercooler inside there to look at those secondary air valves, check some of the voltages, things like that, see if we've got something obvious, uh, and try to get that uh, engine code cleared so that I have cruise control on the trip, and then secondly, getting under that front end and seeing if we got a ball joint or something going uh, going bad underneath there that's giving me some slack in the system uh, or if it's the rack and pinion that's kind of fighting me or maybe it just needs to be the diff uh, the diffs and the uh, power steering need fluid need to be flushed need to be changed who knows so that's what we're going to get to this time so here we go guys you've seen this before so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the intercooler and get down here to where I can get to these secondary air valves once I get to that point I'll give a little more uh, insight into that because there's not a whole lot um, out there on those secondary air injection valves so okay so got the intercooler out and so now we're looking at the secondary uh, air combination valves and you have the uh, essentially the left hand one here and then underneath here is the right hand one and then it has a tube that runs along so you see it's starting to come across and it comes over here and then and then makes a turn and goes into the back of the engine so the delete kits a lot of times just have a little blocker plate for that and then you remove the whole tube and that valve and then over here same thing but what we're going to do like i've said before this thing's too new to be having trouble with water in those valves. We've pulled the hoses off of them previously to just check and see what's going on there. So the left one, it says you can get out without removing the intake. 
it's the right one here that it says remove the intake. So let's get this one off and take a look and see what we got. The first thing we're going to do is remove this hosing. All right, so I've pulled off this one off of the secondary there, and I pulled this one off of the, I should say secondary, they're both secondary. This is the left hand, I pulled it off of there. This is the right hand valve, I pulled it off of there, pushing that out of the way. Now you can see down here, this is the secondary air pipe. That's where it injects it back into the exhaust. So a couple of 10 millimeters there, it looks like, and uh, we'll pull that off. Okay, so we got those. Looks like that pipe will pull away. So now let's see if we can get. I'll have to use a wrench on this. Underneath the tube that we've pulled off and backed away, there's a bracket. You can see part of it right there, the black piece that, that curves around, that's the bracket. It has a bolt over here going into the engine. 12 millimeter, I'm gonna to try to show you that one. If I can get that off, then maybe the whole thing will just lift up and I won't have to worry about the 10 millimeter that's underneath there, right above the starter coming up upward. But I'll try to take you down there and give you an underside shot. If you look up underneath, just over the top edge of that starter, right up in here is where that, uh, underneath there is where that 10 millimeter bolt is. So I'm gonna to try to get this, this 12 millimeter out and we'll see if we can pull that whole bracket out from the top. Got the bolt out of the bracket. And uh, hopefully, there went the gasket for that, the metal gasket. So we wanna make sure we get that. But So there we go. There's that impossible 10 millimeter bolt we were looking at. So in fact, well, it has a little tab on here that keeps the rotation down. I'm not going to loosen that because I don't want to mess with the rotation of how this bolts up here, mess it all up. But now we can go on to the other series of tests here that check out the inside of this, any issues um, that might have been occurring. It said water gets in there. I see no water, evidence of any water in this one. So with the uh, e-manuals online here, check some of the voltages. Um, across the pin connectors in uh, voltages and uh, resistances and things like that and see if we can get a little bit of uh, indication whether we've got a bad wire or something. So let's go ahead and do some further own checkage. All right, so we're gonna check this. I got it on the 200 ohm setting, touching terminals four and six. Five point eight. Five point eight ohms, five point seven right there at the end. And it says you need um, at sixty-eight degrees Fahrenheit, which right now it's about fifty degrees, so it's a little colder. I don't know how that affects. I could probably look it up and tell you pretty quickly how that affects resistance, but with it saying five plus or minus point five, that would be five point five, and we're at five point seven. I'm gonna call that good to go. So now terminal two and three, fifteen or less, that's at twelve and a half. So we're looking good there. And then one and two should be 45, 4.5 kilo ohms or less. So that's a good sign. That's saying that electrically the valve electronics seem to be good. Um, now there is a test to see that the, the air does not come out from B, from this when air is blown into A. And there's no air coming out, so it's solid. All right, check number two, good. Now it wants you to connect the battery, positive to six and negative to four. It should open that valve when I blow into it. I hear it, so let's try it. So it seems to be working. It's not the valve, it's not the resistance of the valve, the valve is working. So what is happening that is causing that wiring not to transmit the proper signals to the valve? So what I have to do is now move over to the electrical schematics and chase 
this wiring back to see what's going on. We know there's two terminals on this on the uh, right hand one so might as well inspect it as well. One and come on two. All right so 5.6 so I'm gonna call that one good too. So that one's working as well. Okay so now we're Go check the uh, secondary air pump, this beast right here. Um, so I disconnected the, the connector to it here. And I've got my jumper cables here again. It tells you which one to put the positive one, which one to put the negative on. Do not operate it more than 80 seconds. So I'll go ahead and clip that to the number one terminal. And then here's the operation of the air pump. So it's operating and when you run it back here these hoses that we pulled off you can feel them blast in the air so our duct works good uh, air is getting to the valves the valves have proper operating characteristics and uh, appear to be in, uh, in good shape so I've got this jumper and I'm essentially looking at how these relays operate right so this is a Denso relay so you got a, a signal input that comes in here low voltage um, that says hey open uh, you know supply power to the to the air valve then you've got this one here that is grounded so when that low voltage signal comes in this just acts like a switch that connects these two these two happen to be a positive from the battery right here and a negative uh, that goes to the output that opens the valve or op flips whatever you know turns on whatever it is you're trying to turn on So that's the basic operation. So what I'm doing is in the fuse box I've pulled out the relays and now I am just I don't need this signal. I am forcing it I've got the key in the car turned to the on position and I am pushing uh, or I'm, I'm jumping between the ba positive battery to the output and did discover that on this one here this is the air cut. Uh, this is an EJ model, right, with, uh, without a push button start. This is air cut relay two, interestingly enough, because air cut relay two is actuating the left hand air valve. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, that was hard to get that back on there. That, uh, the tube that connects to it, the metal one that goes down to the exhaust, was, uh, was very difficult to get back in there. Uh, what I ended up doing was just keeping the valve completely uh, detached from everything and fastening it first to that pipe because it's a metal pipe that has a little bit of flex, but when you're reaching in tight places trying to get these screws in and every time you drop one it gets stuck down there in the rack and pinion or somewhere in the, the abyss of the Subaru uh, front end. Um, it's best just to go ahead and get those on first and then secure the uh, the valve down. So that's what I've done. I got the hoses on, the connectors put back in there. Um, so the second the the secondary air valve left hand side is replaced, and now I'm going to go ahead and start looking into this uh, this fuse box area. Shot some of the wires here. Found which one the the good relay socket was making good continuity with one of the pins to the left hand secondary air valve. Um, could not find good continuity to anything from the other air cut circuit, the, the left relay, um, not to the first valve or the second valve, uh, the left or the right valve. For now I'm going to go ahead and put the intercooler back in and button this up so that we can um, run it and see if it had any change. Put back together, got the tester, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and hook this up and see if we can clear the codes and if maybe we got lucky here, at least on one of them. Okay guys, hey it's Biff here. Uh, it is another day and uh, I was going to go after the differentials and uh, go ahead and change out the fluid in those and start tackling those other problems, but I did some looking at wiring schematics and 
I'm getting really close on this secondary air valve, and I just discovered something, and I want to I want to bring you into this. So uh, I apologize, the light is horrible down in here, but um, as you can see, I have taken the um, what you call that thing, the intercooler, out again, so I could get to these uh, these valves again, one and two, and I've been I pulled out all of my fuse box here and I'm chasing wires in reverse. So what have I found? This entire section right here is pretty much for the, uh, the air injection system. So you got the air pump, you got, you got uh, your 12 volt, volt power coming up here going through this 60 amp fuse into the relay here for the air pump, which we've already verified runs just fine with lots of power, hence the bigger fuse and the bigger uh, relay. And then you got your left and right, essentially what it amounts to um, air uh, valve, secondary air valves. The one, as, as we showed already, I can jumper between the two connections here and actually make it click open and close. The other one I can make click open and closed, but it won't uh, do it from the relay, only when I do it directly. So as I look at some of the schematics for this here, I've run across a few things. Let me see if I can find a couple of them. Here's your air pump. Engine ground comes in terminal one, comes out terminal two. I'm running in reverse here, keep in mind. Comes up, goes to the, the secondary air pump relay, and then gets its power uh, through that, up here through the 60 amp fuse up to battery positive, right? So we trace, trace all that and it all works properly and plus we've seen that run. Okay, for, I'll go in reverse here. We already checked from terminal number six, pin number six out of the secondary uh, air combination valve, the one that has the six pin connector uh, out of that sixth pin comes up, goes through a connector which I don't know where it exists, uh, up across through the main fuse box and uh, up over into our secondary air combination valve relay number one, which when you've made the relay comes up through the 10 amp fuse and up to the battery positive. We've already checked that and we've seen the operation of the valve uh, from the battery uh, to through this whole system, right? Because we what we did is we short circuited this here and I know the, that this is good, this continuity. But when I try to short circuit air combination valve relay number two right here where and it should also come from the battery positive down through the 10 amp fuse down through uh let me keep going down here down through the secondary air combination valve relay two and then out whenever i try to short that across to, to make sure that this is working i short across these nothing happens so now what I've done is I've traced downstream uh, into the back of the fuse box to try to find this F37 connector, which I don't see any way to, that that's designated, but I've, I think I found it. it's the two big white ones that I'm gonna show you opposite of each other. This is really obscure here. The, all these little lines, those aren't like straight across. They're not well marked. This whole thing here is the fuse box, which essentially has an electrical circuit card in it and makes it hard to tell. But when I checked all the pins on this other connector, I found one that had continuity with it. I found the continuity came all the way into this pin number 16, but the corresponding pin on connector B143 is empty. There's no wire in it. So the next thing I did is I'm tracing back here to make sure that I have continuity between this and one of the wires, one of the other wires in that connector. So I found the wire that has continuity from number two back to the connector and it's in a different hole than where it should be to receive power from number 16. So remember, I got this set up right here to replace the one that was destroyed in the crash off of eBay. Uh, it could be from a WRX. In fact, it probably is. It's probably not from an STI. Um, I already had to do a little bit of modification here because it didn't have the position for this fuse. So I modified it to match the one on the old car, uh, you know, mimic the wires and threw in an extra fuse thing here so that I have the right continuity there for the system that it says belongs to uh, asterisk number four up there, which is the 
telematics for the EJ engine. I don't know what the hell telematics are, but they're powered. Okay, squirrel. All right, but, so this came from a different car. So that explains why maybe the way the pins from my car, these white connectors here, these are the, the B whatever and the F uh, 37 or whatever those connectors are um, that's why these are a little bit uh, the pinouts on these may not match exactly the pinouts on this for continuity to go through this when I check continuity from where the power should go out of this relay and come in to the connector that goes into the fuse box I find that it comes into this big the biggest one here, the big power piece in the middle of this. So the largest spot right there is where I'm getting the continuity. Now, knowing which pin that is back here, I've got that one. Now I go zipping along back here to try to figure out which one in these shadows, which one of these pins, I touch each one of these pins and see when I get continuity. And it turns out I get it right here on this pin. So I don't know if you can see that, but that is after the power has come in here, gone through whatever circuit board is in here, gone through whatever fuses it needs to go through, and then pops back out. It comes out on this bottom pin down here on this F37 connector. F37, B143. So bottom, bottom, left pin as you're looking at it right here goes to the corresponding spot on the F37 connector and when I look at it if you can see that it's empty no bueno all right so then what I've done is I'm connected into the wire on my number two valve down there to see which one of the wires in this F37 goes down to that valve I will connect one end of it here, like this, to my tester, and then the other one, I sit here, you can see it, and I will go through these, like so, until I find the one <clears throat> that has continuity. And it turns out, there it is. And, but bottom line, if I can get this pin out of this fourth position and put it down here into this empty spot, then my continuity should be correct to go through and actually power that valve. I was able to uh, remove the pin from that number four position right there, or number four, whatever, fourth one down uh, right there. You can see that it's missing and now it's down here by my thumb on the very end one on the other side and it's in there and secured um, the way that I had to do that with this connector is the tabs are on this side at a really crappy jewelers screwdriver if you had one that was longer it would work better but that's what you need so that when you get in here um, and you go against the outer edge of this and get all the way down in there and hit the tab and you can pry back on it, pry it that way and then that allows you to pull the connector straight on out and then over here the connector is oriented the exact same way and I just pushed it up in there until it snapped. So now that is set we are ready to clip these back in. I'm gonna go ahead and put all the connectors back in here F37, B143, I think they were, so those are all snapped. Now the fun part of trying to get all of this back down in its slot. Now that we have that, let's check our uh, ability to jumper these and make the air valves operate. A little continuity check here before we button it all up. Second 
getting quick at doing the intercooler. It only took about five minutes to get that put back on. So now let's go ahead and see what we've got. Okay, so first thing we'll do here is go ahead and let it talk to the car and then we'll clear the codes. So P0413, secondary air injection system switching valve A and B, P0416, and secondary air injection system control A circuit low, 2257. So let's go ahead and erase the codes. Okay, erase is done, check engine light came right back on. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens when we clear them. back to normal where the chick engine light doesn't even stay off well guys I thought for sure that was going to be it this time uh, I'm scratching my head now I was hoping uh, non-delete options were uh, were going to be available but uh, it's looking like it's not meant to be well I think with that I'm just gonna have to uh, drive it and see if we get it to maybe clear itself out over time I've lost hope for that um, next thing I got to do is get under it and change the diff fluid put on some new belts I got a squeaky belt there on the power steering that I think might be causing some of my steering uh, issues I'm gonna check the suspension up front and then uh, it's gonna be time to road trip it for Thanksgiving so um, sorry learned some good things up front and uh, it looked promising um, you know and we'll press on and keep finding out what we can uh, fix between the Trans Am and the wheel bearings on the on the Titan and this thing fighting me with that with the one final bit of clearance that needs to happen there to get rid of the check engine codes uh, I'm really getting frustrated with these uh, uh, the vehicles and their uh, their unwillingness to cooperate with me but uh, hey it gives us something to keep working on and uh, and we'll keep plugging away at it so Please continue to keep uh, watching the, the shows as we put them out there. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time, all right? Take care.